If there's one thing you should learn about Costa Rica, it's their famous expression, Pura Vida, which means pure life. Everywhere you go, people here embrace positivity and good energy, sharing great experiences and culture. In fact, this trip was really possible because of an amazing viewer named Mr. Fabrich. He took me in, he was able to translate English and Spanish, and he and his girlfriend Pauline made this trip incredible. It's a story of friendship and family. It's a story of paying way too much money in a store because you're too proud to say no to a cute saleswoman. And yes, it's a story of the Takis Burrito. This was a limited edition item at Taco Bell, but it's only found in Costa Rica. And look, you have to understand, I am a bona fide Takis fanatic. I love Red 40. I want all of my meals to be sour and spicy with way too much salt. Did I fly all the way out to Costa Rica just to try the Takis Burrito? Well, Scouts, does the Pope wear a funny hat? I rest my case. After a very dubious flight on Avianca Airlines, which frankly deserves its own video, I did end up in the city of San Jose in Costa Rica. This is the capital area. It's full of life and energy. They've got a Chinatown district. They've got all sorts of food. Art is everywhere in this area, including this KFC. I don't know, something about the architecture really stands out to me. But in all seriousness, art and architecture really do tie in hand in hand in this entire area. I love seeing these big red spirals. I love seeing all the installations everywhere. And in fact, the museum itself was really cool. We went to this local area that talked about all of the currencies. In fact, one of the main exhibits was just the history of piggy banks in general. I guess um, the idea of a pig being something prosperous that maybe families who are wealthier could grow and be able to you know feed and be able to feed themselves with a delicious pork based meal um, it ended up becoming something of an icon for luxury and for richness and so that's where you would put your money in a piggy bank another thing I learned is that Costa Rica in obtaining independence from Spain had some issues at first with their own currency and really, if you stop to think about it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, Costa Rica is a smaller area, you know, surrounded by the sea. It doesn't have, you know, rich mineral mines that you can use to easily mint coins. And so a lot of the history of Costa Rica is trying to figure out its own currency and f trying to figure out a situation where you can actually be minting, you know, your own coins and not be subservient to Spain. Now, the place we stayed at was to die for. This was Pauline's aunt's recommendation. She took us in for free. It is a place called Secret Garden. So imagine a beautiful cabin situation, chock full of all the amenities you could ever ask for, including swag. You've got ourselves a Secret Garden sweatshirt, which was a lot of fun. And as somebody who's Greek, you know, I didn't necessarily uh, fit inside of this uh, Team Wine onesie slash sweater, whatever the heck it is, but I'm definitely on Team Wine. I, I think my Greek ancestors would have to agree with that. Um, inside as well, you've got all of your amenities like your laundry. There's a whole cooking area where as a family of sorts, we were able to cook up our own delicious Costa Rican meals. But really the selling point in my opinion is just the scenery. You've got this gorgeous red sunset up on the hills. Greenery is everywhere. You can see the town of Cartago, which we were right outside. Again, something about just being in that area with drinks in your hand, food by your side, and a good, good group of friends and crew. It's just something amazing. Pura Vida at its finest right there. If you're someone who enjoys nature but also likes to live life a little bit nicer, I think you'll really enjoy the glamping experience at Secret Garden. Again, I cannot thank Pauline's aunt enough. It was an amazing, amazing experience. I would recommend it to absolutely anyone. Now, before we entered the city of Cartago proper, I woke up bright and early to do an ATV experience, and I have to share with you the story of Peter, my tour guide. So Peter is a man in his 60s. He's somebody who's definitely seen it all, you know, according to the sort of exasperated size he gives as he kind of looks at you and sizes you up as a tourist and he's telling me don't go too fast you know that's the most dangerous thing you can do if you go too fast and pass him up you know acting like he's seen a whole bunch of people do it and he probably has to his credit so I do the opposite I'm going a little slower uh, or at least I'm giving him a lot of space right kind of like defensive driving because he likes to pull over a lot to you know let me take pictures to his credit that was certainly something I wanted to do but he's always you know making these these motions with his hands like hurry up hurry up hurry up and you know I'm like okay I'm trying to be safe here I, I clearly can't win you know go too fast to get 
you know, an earful, go too slow, you get an earful. We make it all the way to the top and there's this amazing view and there's also um, a restaurant, right? A spot up here that has probably the best quesadillas I've ever had in my life. They were only $3 after, you know, uh, converting the currency. Absolutely delicious, delicious foods. And he's like trying to make small talk with me, okay? I was thinking I might just like, you know, grab my own seat and maybe, you know, take some pictures or whatever. But he's trying to make small talk and it's not really going well. And he's kind of giving me the story of like his own life and all these things like that. And he's like, look, man, like, you know, I never thought I wanted to be an ATV driver at the age of 60, but here I am. You know, I'm trying to be polite. Like, oh, you know, what an amazing job you got. You got to have a lot of fun each day. And he's just kind of shaking his head. So I'm like, man, like, I can't even hype this guy up by hyping up his own job. I'm not really sure how to go about this. At one point, he shows me a picture of a small girl, very cute. I think, oh, is this your daughter? He's like, no, this is my niece. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm not sure why you're showing me a picture of your baby niece, but okay, I really appreciate it, Peter. I hope you're having a good time, man. Pura Vida and all that. Uh, we end up going back down the entire mountain pass. And um, I, to my credit, or you know, rather to maybe his mood or whatever, you know, he's not making these motions. He's really enjoying uh, you know, the speed that I'm at. And at the end of it all, you know, I asked for a picture with him. He says, absolutely not. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Can I get at least get a fist bump? He kind of sizes me up, up and down. <laughs> he gives me the most reluctant fist bump you've ever seen in your entire life. So for what it's worth, thank you, Peter, for an amazing time. I uh, hope your baby niece is doing well and, uh, you know, poor vida to you, my friend. So anyway, we do end up entering the town of Cartago and this is a very historic area. And in fact, the big thing here is the very special cathedral. It's called the Basilica de Los Angeles or in English, the Basilica of Our Lady of Angels. In this is an extremely interesting story. So there is a little, little statue of the Virgin Mary called La Negrita, the Black Virgin. And according to legends of history, there was a peasant girl in Cartago hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the early 1600s, who came across La Negrita, this little statue. She picked it up and she took it home, but the next day the statue had just disappeared. Right on the rock is where people found it. She took it to a priest, the priest locked it up in a box, but the very next day it disappeared from the box and it reappeared on that same rock again. The people there were so mystified by La Negrita showing up on this rock, so they decided to build a shrine around it instead of continuing to move it. Now, unfortunately, the area is full of earthquakes, so there has been a lot of damage in the area as they tried to do so. In fact, the ruins of one of these cathedrals can be walked through. It's a whole garden with beautiful little ponds and areas like it. I love that we don't just tear down history, but we make it a part of our area here in Cartago. Now, as you can imagine, La Negrita is a very special statue that has a lot of significance for people who believe in her and worship her. Um, you can find a replica of her very easily. And there's also the proper one as well, where people will come to make prayers and offerings. Uh, for example, if maybe a child in their life has ear problems, they might donate a little silver pendant of an ear and put it right beside her. Pray to the Virgin Mary and see that their blessings are answered. In fact, there are entire displays of all of these offerings that people have given throughout the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of La Negrita being here. And it's really amazing to see all of the history right there physically present. Another thing about this basilica is because the Virgin Mary is so important, every August 2nd, they celebrate the Virgin Day. Many people make pilgrimages out. And in fact, there are people who will approach the um, altar area inside the cathedral, but what they'll do is not use their shoes or even walk. They kind of shuffle on their knees in this beautiful, beautiful act of worship and deference and just showing their respects to the Virgin Mary, who was again, so incredibly important in this area. Then we got to link up with Pauline's other aunt, who is equally incredible. She hosted us for a big family-style gathering in a very traditional Costa Rican style with very traditional Costa Rican food. Right off the bat, I was blown away by her love of ancient Egypt. She's got all of these artifacts and all of these paintings that are all over the place. It turns out she is a world traveler, and in fact, she married a Korean man. So she knows a bit of Korean, and he knows a lot of Spanish as well. Now, I have to say, again, an amazing meal rice pudding, having delicious foods. 
Her cooking was something I just scarfed down tremendously. And actually, as a side note, um, in Costa Rica, they have big bottles of Coca-Cola that you can actually fill up yourself, almost like using a soda fountain somewhere. I love this because it's going to be cutting down on all of that recycling waste rather than buying, you know, five different liters of Coke. Just get it right from the source. It actually tasted a lot better, too, because you know that they're using that real sugar out there in Costa Rica. Now, her aunt, once again, so incredibly kind, so passionate, so exciting. Even though there was a language barrier, we were still able to communicate with Pura Vida. And in fact, she ended up giving me two extremely precious relics that I still have to this day. So one of them is a Costa Rican ox cart. This is called the Coreta, and it's actually a symbol of Costa Rica itself. It takes hard work and determination to pull an ox cart, and it represents not only that diligence, but also, you know, being self-sufficient, being able to cook your own meals and do your own things. They're decorated in all of these beautiful colors all throughout the country, so I was so happy to get one myself. And the other relic is called the Choreador. I hope I pronounced that right. It's an old fashioned coffee maker. So the idea is you've got a sock or some sort of cloth that is going to be filtering out coffee water as you're heating them up and you're gonna have the most pure distilled version of that in your mug. It was an amazing meal. And speaking of Choreadors, we got to try a new fashioned one up at Pauline's restaurant that she works at. It's called Recoleta, and it is full of amazing artwork all throughout the area. This is not, you know, super historic stuff, but these are pieces that are done by Costa Ricans in the local area. You've got all this amazing furnishing. In fact, the outside area feels like it's inside. So you have this wonderful combination of the ambiance of an indoors place while also having like the fresh air that's not too cold because there's still a good amount of shielding in it. What an amazing restaurant. I thought the food was so good. And even though I am not the biggest coffee guy myself, I really did enjoy the Choreador in a modern style. After our amazing meal, we ended up going to an area called Escazú. This means resting place in Spanish, and it's essentially a land full of witches. There was a really great and very homely festival that was happening in this whole area with, again, great food, although truthfully, I was mostly full from that amazing restaurant we had earlier than that. People here are playing with each other on the basketball court. They're having wonderful little merry-go-rounds. There's all these beautiful colors that are going up and down everywhere. In fact, I was able to get a really great shot of me and Mr. Fob just hanging around. I cannot tell you enough how fun it feels to be in an area with so much spirit, so much vitality. Again, Pura Vida, my friends, what a great spot to be in. The next morning, we spent a lot of time figuring out how we are going to ship the Choreador and the Careta relics that I received because I packed very lightly and I didn't really expect to have, you know, fragile things that were going to be taken with me. We did have to go and ship it. And this was a whole process. Uh, unlike, you know, post offices in the U.S., um, the Costa Rican post offices don't sell parcels that you can use easily. So we ended up having to go very locally to a spot next door because Mr. Fob doesn't have a car. Pauline was using it for work. Um, and we didn't want to just Uber around a whole bunch and spend a bunch of money. We ended up grabbing basically boxes that you would pack donuts in. And to our credit, I mean, we filled this box up with all sorts of delicious treats. We were at the mall not too long before that, and I did end up spending quite a lot of money at a store. Uh, there was a very cute storekeeper who was speaking to me and was definitely convincing me to buy all these little goodies to take with me, which I did ultimately want. Of course, the goodies were delicious, but then, you know, you end up with this pile, you go to check out, and it's like, oh, that was $102. Okay, I'm too proud to say no to that. I'm just gonna give you my credit card and we're gonna ship it all back to myself and really enjoy these delicious foods. Of course, I got a bag of Takis. They are more vertical here, which I guess is good if you wanna feel like your hand is a crane and you're trying to pull out a treat. Uh, it doesn't really fit your full hand that well. Maybe your hands are smaller in Costa Rica. I don't know. Um, I didn't feel like it tasted super different either, but they tasted great nonetheless. Um, I also tried some interesting treats like a Korean-style Coke over here called K-Wave. Had some different fruity flavors in it. Felt like it was K-pop inspired, which might have a home here in Costa Rica. I'm not entirely sure about that. Oh, and one final note in the mall too, how reassuring it feels to see a Sparrow here in freaking Costa Rica, the biggest mall classic, absolute trash food. Love to see it. 
One other thing that we did end up packing too are Costa Rican cards that are a part of the rainforest. So there's a whole system out here, especially in the grocery stores where you can get a collector set of like a portfolio and you're opening up these packs of, you know, different animals that are a part of the rainforest and you're just trying to collect them all. I did not want to buy just a complete set. I wanted to have the thrill of opening up booster packs. So in fact, if you'd ever like to watch me do that, I've been holding on to these for months trying to find a good opportunity to bust them open. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that because we could have a fun stream where we can just go ahead and try and get all of the Costa Rican cards. But anyway, yeah, we did end up having to use a saran wrap and, you know, being really, really thrifty with our cardboard boxes to make sure that all the things would get shipped to me properly. It wasn't too expensive. It was maybe like $30 to ship over to the United States, which really is not that bad. And I can't tell you enough how relieved I was that nothing was damaged in transit, that it was a safe and very reputable spot. So shout out to the Costa Rican post office, Puerto Vida to you, my friend. Now, because Mr. Fob also had work to get to, I ended up going to Jaco Beach by myself. I took a bus. And even though it was tricky not knowing Spanish, I was ultimately able to get there just fine. In fact, in Hako itself, it's a very touristy area. You would imagine that the beach areas are going to be full of more English. And in fact, having US dollar signs and not just, um, you know, Costa Rican currency was a, a really standout way of knowing, okay, we're in a slightly different part of Costa Rica. Hako Beach was beautiful. I'm talking about sunsets with people riding horses on them, silhouettes in the background. You can fish without having to wade 10, 15 feet in the water or even taking a boat out. The standout for sure was this performer who did an amazing job showing off her moves. I felt like she was somebody so captivating and really encapsulated the relaxed but also very passionate feeling here in Costa Rica. After that, I had dinner at Ridiculous Burger, which, as the name suggests, was a very, very ridiculous burger and also a ridiculous shake. I mean, just take a look at the photos of these Whoppers right here. They're so big. They're pretty expensive, too, but they're really filling. And look, you're going to order this for the gimmick of it, right? And you know that I'm all about the gimmicks. I absolutely love the reason that we're here is for the Takis Burrito. And so let's just chow down. This was something super tasty. It was called the Hako Burger, which I felt was very fitting considering we were in. Hako Beach. It used a lot of beans in it. I've never had a burger with beans on it, but again, very tasty, had plantains as well, and I felt like it was a good little send-off to this very fun area of Hako. A lot to do in this area. I could absolutely see myself having a proper vacation in the summer and really, you know, exploring the areas that are so scenic right by the water. But look, at the end of the day, we were here for one reason, right? And that was the official Takis Burrito. Now, you have to understand, I was so interested in trying this thing that I hired my friend Bank Dog to help me make a prototype version of it, a DIY version, if you will, way back in Los Angeles. He is a bona fide Taco Bell expert, probably the number one fan, at least as far as I know. And he did give me a pretty good setup here. Well, I kind of hyped that up. Got this bitch hoop right here. We'll slice into it. All right. Oh, looking pretty good. Got a little beef and sour cream. Got a little bit of hoop of that going on. And you think the cheese? How does the cheese? It's a different dip it sauce. Okay. Let's put that other taki more in. Yeah, I'll uh, shog them all up. Okay, that looks pretty much to me. All right, here we go, gang. Moment of truth here. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Let's get a little dipping sauce in here too. <laughs> oh yeah, no. This is the hoop, for sure. This is the hoop. All right, that should be good enough. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> May as well just keep dropping at this point.
on a scale of one to ten. That's like an eight. But you know, it just wasn't quite the same thing, was it? I feel like there's really something to be said about actually traveling to try the official thing, and that's here we are, right? Doing exactly that. And I should say, on the kiosks here at Taco Bell, the Takis Burrito was a full-on option, right? You don't have to click on specialties or click on limited edition or whatever. It was just right there on the menu. That's how you know this is a people that respect Red 40 and what Takis has to offer. I should also note as a bonus surprise, there was also the Takis Cheesy Melt, which seemed like a quesadilla style with Takis in them. Uh, I ordered that too, because why not? It was also very, very tasty. But how was the burrito itself? Mmm. No. Okay, that's really good. I gotta get the queso dipping sauce too. Mmm. You get that Takis crunch. That side view right there has a little bit of texture, a little bit of extra, you know, lime flavor. It's really good. I'm, I'm a big fan. This is amazing. As a bonus limited edition item, I also had an Oreo dessert that was wrapped and dipped with caramel. Holy cow. I feel like Taco Bell has some of the worst and weakest desserts in the fast food game, at least as far as the US goes. I feel like Cine Twists are like so dry and whatever. So if they could just incorporate something like that here in the States, I can guarantee you, Taco Bell, you would have a smash sensation on your hands. But more than that, please bring the Takis Burrito here. It was absolutely amazing. It was worth every dollar that I spent on this Costa Rican trip and more. People often say that the journey is better than the destination, but in the case where the destination is just as good as the journey, that is an amazing trip, am I right? Okay, no, in all seriousness, the real MVPs of the trip were absolutely Mr. Fab, Pauline, her aunts, the extended family, all of the amazing people who took me out and really shared and let me bask in the culture of Costa Rica. I can tell you with full certainty, this will not be my last trip. I am absolutely coming back to see other parts of the area, to see the rainforest, to see all the sloths and different animals to collect for the trading cards. I did get a Pura Vida pin to add to my Scoutmaster hat. I always do this for trips and experiences that really leave an impact on me. So again, salute to all of the amazing people who made this trip possible. And shout out to Takis for being what you are and for convincing me to take a leap of faith and just try something brand new. Thanks for watching, Scouts.